This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. This is part 57 of Understanding the Kingdom series. And I got an uh, email this week from a minister in Uganda that says that they have begun preaching this series in that nation and said, I don't really care if you go to a thousand because it's waking up the remnant. It's setting the saints of God on fire for the things of God. Today's going to be part one of the weight and power of carrying the name of God. And that'll end up being put on two parts on Biblical Life TV. If you have your Bibles today, I want to turn to Numbers chapter 6, starting in verse 22. You can't really understand what we have in the second covenant with Messiah until you properly understand that which he established in the first, because it's the foundation that we've got to set on. Unless you have that Hebraic understanding, you misinterpret so much of the New Testament. And you may think I'm going to go at this sideways today, but I'm not. This is known as the ironic Blessing. And we've tried to formulate it, we've tried to make it into a faith formula, and we've tried to do all these different things, not really realizing the dynamic of what was being played out before the assembly. Now, we have already dealt with in this series, in the, in the Principality Wars, how that we are called out of Babylon, and that after God gathers those called out that are now going to walk with Him, the assembled ones that God instructs the priests, this is what you speak over those who have been delivered, called out, answered the call, came out, and now have dedicated themselves to walking with me. Okay? Whoop! And we're not going to stop with verse 26, because if you do, you miss the punchline. Okay? Okay? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise shall ye bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord to make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And we all stop there. But the dynamic of what is being played out in what they're saying is this, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. One of the things in the dynamics that we're seeing in the last days, now in Laodicea, you can fake blessing of God. You can play the devil's game, dance in church on the weekend, and everybody thinks you're blessed of God. When you're actually blessed of the devil, 
And there are a lot of ministries today that have been funded by the enemy to get the body off. God can only bless that which has been called out, assembled, dedicated to him by blood, and bear his name, or bears his name. My grammar Nazi is starting to jump in on me here as I'm even speaking. That bears his name. If it doesn't bear his name and walking according to his name, God can't bless it. Okay? I've already departed from my notes. It's okay. I'll wander back. Okay? It seems like the modern church today more resembles Jacob before his transformation. That we will come up with formulas, we will cheat, light, steal, whatever we need to do to come up with a blessing. And so many times, even after, even after he left Laban and he had all this wealth and everything else, he wrestled with God all night. And when God actually finally said, what do you want, man? I want you to bless me. You got a caravan that stretches real long. You've already, you've, you, you basically... God blessed you supernaturally so much, and yet he wants another blessing. Because Jacob didn't get it yet. Once he wrestled with God, God changed his walk. He changed his mindset. But the modern church doesn't get it. We think it's formulas. We think it's just a matter of you know, you, you turn on Christian TV, a lot of times it's like, it's like a, a pyramid program. It's like Amway. Each one is plus, pl, you know, pledging more. If you give to this one, you'll have three angels. If you give this one, you'll have seven angels come to your home. They're sending out water that's been blessed, bread that's been blessed, cloth that's been blessed. Cloth isn't supposed to hold the blessing. It's supposed to hold the anointing. <laughs> you know what's supposed to hold the blessing? You. Because you've walked with God. The ironic blessing is not some magic prayer that produces blessing. The prayer is not some faith formula to produce blessing either. It is words spoken over by the priest over the assembly that paints a prophetic picture. And what it literally paints is a father welcoming a small child that he just adopted into the family. <sighs> May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Now, keep means to watch your ways, but it also means you're a keeper. Turn to your neighbor and say, through Jesus, I'm a keeper. He isn't going to throw you out. You know, I've heard a lot of parents that have adopted kids that have told them, you know, then they had natural siblings. They say, you know, I was, you know, we're stuck with Junior. We produced him, but we went out and we hunted up you. You know, we chose you over everybody else. Which, to a great degree, gives a, a measure of, of purpose to that child because they had the spirit of rejection. And because of the spirit of adoption, it, re, it replaces the spirit of rejection. I found you, I wanted you, I pulled you to myself, and I kept you, and I put my name on you. Oh, if you're not happy yet, I'm dancing on the inside already. I know where I'm going. But it paints a picture. Have you ever seen, I did it this morning with some of the little ones. They, you know, when they come up and they go like this, you can't help but light up. You know, it's, it's like, when we look at this, may the Lord bless thee and keep the op arms open wide to receive. The Lord make his face to shine on you. When you when, especially with a grandparent, if you haven't seen a grandbaby in a long time, they come running up to you, you light up. Make your face shine upon you. And then the next one is, Lift up his countenance upon you. How can his countenance be lifted up if he's already shining on you? When you pick up a child, you do this. And lift up his countenance upon you. And then may he give you peace. 
It's the Spirit. They were, the priests were speaking the Spirit of adoption over Israel. And God called that placing the name of God upon the assembly. In Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 14, Paul touches on this, trying to both remind the rabbis that were causing some of the problems in Rome, as well as introducing the Gentiles to what happened. You see, the day that you were born again, the day that you surrendered to God and said, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Let the blood of Jesus cover me. I receive you as my Savior. You are now my King. Jesus, as the high priest, spoke the blessing over you as you were welcomed into the Father's arms. Now, the Apostle Paul is declaring this in Romans 8, but he also begins to express it from our point of view. You're, you're seeing a picture of the child coming up, the father grabbing him and lifting him up and then holding him. And now for the first time, we hear the proper response after we have been welcomed into the family. Listen to this. For as many of that are, as are led by the Spirit of God, what are they? They are sons of God. Uh-oh, some of the B'nai Elohim just got replaced. The only one that was ever called in the Old Testament a B'nai Elohim was the king because he was adopted by God over Israel, besides the angels. Now because of Jesus, we have been born again, we have been born into this kingdom, and now we are B'nai Elohim. We have been made the sons of God, welcomed into the family, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but, you have, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. That spirit of adoption that is spoken over you by Jesus. And as the Father welcomes you as a new son or daughter in the kingdom, He says that same spirit causes us to cry out, Abba, Father. <laughs> In Abba Father, there is a tenderness of Abba and the great reverent respect as Father is what the Holy Spirit is supposed to produce in us. And then he goes on and says, the Spirit itself or the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Well, how can that happen? Because you have been delivered, you have been cleansed, you have been sealed, and now you have been held by the arms of a father. <laughs> that happens when you get saved. And if that isn't happening when people are getting saved, we're either leading them to the wrong God or we're not preaching the full gospel to them. And now we have the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we are what? We are now children of God. We used to be a sinner. We used to carry around our evil stepfather's name. And we acted like him. Jesus told the Pharisees, you're like, you're like your father, the devil. He's the father of lies. You go around lying and tripping people up and trying to do all these things. You carry the way that that family acts or the way that you acted in hell's orphanage. I mean, a lot of kids have some really, really hard times in orphanages. And some of the things they have gone through have been horrendous. The sanctification process for the believer, now that I've come into the family and the Spirit of God is dwelling on the inside of me, now that I am bearing a new name, I'm representing 
a new family. Now for a child that's maybe 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, when they come into the new family, part of the transition problem that they have is transitioning from the old family or lack thereof to the new family. But you see, with adoption, your last name is changed. You're now carrying a new name. And when we go out into public, we represent that name wherever we go. And let me tell you something, there are a lot that claim to carry the name but they're still acting like the old family. And God can't bless it. Boy, it gets quiet when you talk about stuff like this. Guys, blessing from God is not a formula, and it's not a secret prayer that you can pray. It's a walk. As we learn to live as members of the family of God and walk in the kingdom, the walk produces the blessing. That's why goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Why are they following you? Because your walk is producing it. You can't run after what you have left behind you as awake. Otherwise, you end up being the dog that just runs after its tail all day, and you go, get, you go nowhere. We also become ambassadors in the earth. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, we, now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As through God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. Okay? Same way. Repentance, realizing that you are a sinner, that you're lost in your sins, you're of the other camp, that that iniquity force is functioning in your life, and until you repent and come to the cross, you can never be free. We have a lot of churches and a lot of people that claim to carry the name of Jesus, but they, have, they, they try to do away with sin. They try to ignore it. They don't like talking about the blood. They don't like talking about a lot of things. And they're what the Apostle Paul said, that they, that they, they, they give the resemblance of godliness but deny the power thereof because you can't get to it without repentance. So the part of reconciliation is you're lost. You have an evil stepfather, the devil, and you're flowing in his nature. It happened in the garden. All men are subject to it, Jew or Gentile. The Apostle Paul writing to both Jews and Gentiles in Romans said, For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. That's why everybody needs a Savior. Jew to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile. Now we have crazy doctrines going around that Jews don't need Jesus. Uh-huh. This whole thing started with them. And by the grace of God, we got included. Aren't you glad? Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Old nature, new nature. But unless you're representing the new nature and not the old nature, 
You're not an ambassador. Unless you're properly carrying the new name, you're not an ambassador. You see, being a believer carries great weight in the earth. How many know salvation is free? But walking as a believer is a responsibility that every one of us have before the earth. One of the reasons that so many denominations are dying and they're drying up is they quit representing God. And started representing their movement. If the name's not there, that heaven can see the name being manifested in our doctrines, in our lives, in our attitudes. All of us need an attitudinal adjustment, and the Holy Spirit's about ready to do it in a lot of ways if we're not careful. This is a season of correction, because if we do not yield to the correction, we're not going to be prepared for that which is about to unfold. We're going to have some good times and some bad times all rolled together because the devil doesn't want to give up. And even when he's back slapped out of the second heaven by Michael the archangel, the Bible says there's no more place found for him in heaven. The Bible also says he comes down with great wrath. How many know that's not going to be a party? Guys, we need to make sure that our lives, our ministries, our teaching are calling people to what? What are they calling them to? The God of the Bible or something else? Because we have so many today that are guilty of creating idols crafted by the carnal desires of men. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. I get aggravated when I hear ministers say the Ten Commandments are today, are for today. I didn't realize people could be so stuck on stupid to their own detriment. How how many remember the episode of Aaron and the Golden Calf? Okay. You go centuries later, and the northern tribes split from the southern tribes. And you don't get one calf, you get two. Two for the price of one. And they had the audacity to call that golden calf Yahweh. And so the Ten Commandments, or the Ten Words, begin in verse 1. Because it's a two-parter. I am the Lord thy God which delivered thee out of the bondage of Egypt. Not a golden calf. Not anything else you can construct with your hands. Not anything that paganism has come up with. Not any of the old gods. Not any of the titans. Not the Nephilim, the watchers, the demons, or whatever you want to call them. None of them delivered you. I delivered you out of their hands. I'm God. You see, the God of the Bible is very unique. You can go to pagan gods, and it's like a, it's like a swap meet. You can find any God that will appeal to any of your carnality that you want. You can shape them. You can mold them. Many of the old gods are like the LGBT, you know, all the different alphabet. What they're trying to do, they're trying to mold humanity back into the shape of the old gods because many of them could become male or female at will. It's identifying with the old gods. And it's creating men and women that they'll simply be bricks in the new tower that the son of perdition is building. And so they could change, they could, you could find one for prosperity, like the prosperity Jesus that we have today. And I've got a good friend, L.A. Marzulia, that lives in Malibu, so this is not about him, but we do have the Malibu Jesus. 
And it's just been revealed that Mary Magdalene is played by Malibu Barbie. Because we have, we have, we have the hyper grace Jesus. We, we have this Jesus. We have that Jesus. We have forgotten who delivered us. And we are guilty of making idols and golden calves in the images that we want. And we're calling them Jesus. We're calling them the God of the Bible. And they are not. And let me tell you something. God is ticked off about it because it's causing men to go to hell. You know, when you examine the Passover... And how they were to put the blood over the doorpost. It was on the sides and on the top, never on the threshold. Because you never trod under the blood of the Lamb. And many of the doctrines today are treading under the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to get to the next verse, I promise. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot. Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans, as the powers of Mystery Babylon gathered to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the son of perdition's return. Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com that's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.